Today in the news we got Intel GPUs, a really big glue up, the most confusing lineup from Nvidia, and Navi 3X. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. Back in 2018, the company made a preview video saying that they would have their first XE discrete graphics cards for desktops ready in 2020. Thanks to how horrible that year was, it's understandable that delays would happen for this product. But we're now on the first month of 2021 and we finally have it. Intel's discrete GPUs made by Add-in Board Partners. In a press release, the company said that they are partnering up with Asus and another AIB, that's colorful, to release two GPUs, the Intel Iris XE and Iris XE Max. Both of these graphics cards are essentially the equivalent of their discrete GPUs found on the mobile platform. If we look at the specs, the Iris XE will be based on Intel's 10 nanometer super fin process, have 80 execution units for 640 stream processors, while the XE Max will be on the same process, but have 16 more EUs at 96. The XE Max Max model will be clocked at 1650 megahertz, but we don't have the information for the non-max version. Both models will sport four gigabytes of VRAM on a 128-bit bus and will have LPDDR4X memory. Yep, that's right. It will use good old low power DDR4X. Oh, and they have TDPs of 25 watts and 30 watts respectively. Now, before you ask, no, these products won't be available to purchase on their own. They're exclusive to OEMs, and as confirmed by legit reviews, these GPUs will unfortunately only work with specific CPUs and motherboard combos. They are only compatible with the now two and a half year old 9th gen Coffee Lake S line of CPUs and the current Comet Lake 10th generation family. So this is what we were promised and this is what we got. Also with Intel, we got our first look at the die, or more like dies, of Intel's data center grade XE HPC GPU, specifically a two-tile version of the monster. Raja Kuduri tweeted it out and wow, that's a lot of glue. Yes, Intel, you're never going to live that comment down. At two tiles, this insane masterpiece should be comprised of 1,024 execution units. According to Raja, it comprises seven different silicon technologies. It does look pretty insane. Next up, we got Nvidia. You know how the company has kind of released many versions of their GPUs in the past, like confusing amounts, like the many versions of the GTX 1060, the different dies for the RTX 2060 and more? Well, the company stopped doing that. I'm just kidding, obviously not. Their RTX 3000 series of GPUs for laptops contains not four, not eight, not 10, but 28 different variants of cards. Computerbase.de managed to find a list of all of the variants for the RTX 3060, 3070, and 3080 laptop GPUs. So why are there so many? Well, that's thanks to all the different power requirements and clock speeds for each model. It goes anywhere from 60 watts for some RTX 3060 laptop GPUs to 150 watts for some RTX 3080 laptop GPUs. While it seems like it's not that big of a deal, it actually is. Depending on the GPU's TGP, the clock speeds will be altered significantly, meaning that an RTX 3070 with a higher TGP could be faster than an RTX 3080 with a lower TGP. In fact, if you just look at the max TFLOPS performance, this RTX 3070 with a TGP of 125 watts could be up to 30% faster than this RTX 3080. That's because the latter is incredibly underclocked. Heck, an RTX 3060 laptop laptop GPU could beat that one. That's kind of messed up. The worst part is not all laptop manufacturers are disclosing which variants of the GPU is in the notebook. Nvidia does say that it encourages manufacturers to list TGPs and clock speeds for the notebook GPUs, but a lot of brands have yet to do so. Hopefully, Nvidia does something about this because that's pretty much as confusing as it could get for a mainstream consumer. Lastly, in AMD news, we got what looks like AMD's chiplet design GPUs being benchmarked in Ashes of the Singularity. This benchmark was spotted by LeakBench over on Twitter and shows an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X CPU paired up with an unknown pair of GPUs by the name of Nashira Summit. Now, I'd say to have a heap of salt with this one because the only reason why we think this might be a multi-chip GPU is because, well, there are two of them and AMD has been making the news lately with the room 
rumors that Navi 3X could be their first multi-chip GPU. Theoretically, a multi-chip GPU should be recognized by benchmarks like Ashes of the Singularity as two different GPUs. It was tested with custom settings, so it would be hard to actually compare it to anything, but at least we got some scores here. Now, it's entirely possible that this is just another Navi 2X GPU and that someone is testing a pair of them in multi-GPU mode, but so far, Navi 2X always had fish-based codenames, which leads credence to this being Navi 3X. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.